The World Cup has come to an end. Seven years to prepare, one month to play, FIFA goes, Brazil stays, and we stay with a lot of things. Questions, memories, beautiful stadiums, militarized police, some roads, hangovers, and FIFA's case. FIFA takes the money, the sponsors, the tents, no shame. The circus is done and Russia waits. 7-1 was the least embarrassing number of this World Cup. 7-1 was about soccer. The high number of evictions was about people. The government says around 35,000, but popular comedians estimate 250,000 individuals. That, my friend, is embarrassing. And more embarrassing numbers to compete. Nine deaths of construction workers in official arenas, estimated $2 billion in profits for FIFA, at least two men illegally arrested for protesting, two men in a Brazilian prison, can you even imagine? Numerous illegal detentions by the police, and you come and you complain about 7-1? That's just a very small piece. And it turns I did come to Brazil, not for the World Cup, not for the games, but to see he, she, and they, and all the ones that were here waiting for this to take place. I sat by a table in Fortaleza with an evicted family. In their tiny living room, we took turns for the future as they insisted on giving me food. They made me 10 different juices and they told me about how little they had left. And I met Brazil's next big soccer player. A 10 year old in the depths of a real favela, he told me about his dreams, his family offered me more food, and all I could think was, is he ever going to be able to hear the anthem in the stadium a cappella? And what if he doesn't? And I met and I spoke to a girl that worked selling food for Fortaleza Fun Fest. And you know how much she earned? $25 for 14 hours of work. So many new jobs, they had said. And I walked down streets in Rio where everyone knew everyone. Community is so solid you will not hesitate to come. And I don't even know my neighbor, I thought. So sad to see such beautiful communities being destroyed for a city free of the poor. And soon protest signs turned into Brazilian flags. And I saw mainstream reporters turning into cheerleaders. <laughs> In the opening game, I saw more than 35 people injured by police force in a protest in São Paulo. Olha lá o Neymar com a Bruna Marquezine tirou o chapéu dela. And in Fortaleza, I saw a kid crying for not being able to pay $30 for soccer school. Está fora da Copa. Neymar está fora da Copa. And two people were killed by a brand new, yet unfinished, overpriced bridge that fell near the Belo Horizonte Stadium. That, after a monorail being had already fallen and killed one in São Paulo. Forza Neymar. One tweet a second with this hashtag, and all I could think was the activist Fabio Hidek is still in prison. Is anyone gonna care? Then 7 1. And after a year of sponsors sticking the World Cup through our guts, they come and say it was not that big of a deal anyway. Here, drink some coke. And I heard about the homeless that were violently removed by the police. We never gave a damn about them. Why now? Why like this? Ri was getting ready for the big final, and at least 19 activists were taken to prison with empty proofs cooking oil, tape, and fabric. Bomb ingredients, according to the police. All just to guarantee FIFA would have his final with no disturbance, no booze. And I received threats from all the political spectrum, right, left, police, citizens saying, shut your mouth up. And all I could think was the Brazilian song that says, peace without a voice is not peace, it's fear. And we fear, I fear this model which a private event deprives citizens from their basic rights, where mainstream media does the magic trick of distracting the masses while controversial bills restricting protests are being passed in the dead of the night in Sao Paulo. Meanwhile, I fear that the growth of the revenue of the Brazilian Soccer Confederation is inversely proportional to the growth of the performance of our team. <sighs> Whatever had to be stolen was already stolen. And that was said by Joana Valange, who is the director of the local organizing committee, granddaughter of Joana Valange, daughter of Ricardo Teixeira, the former president of the Brazilian Confederation. And then to worsen the case, some of the Brazilians that sang the anthem, all way a cappella, hands to the chest, left the state of made a match, cursing his peers, burning flags and turning against the cup they have been watching so passionately. And where is the patriotism now, I ask? And what the hell does patriotism do anyways? Join the world as one? I don't think so. I think there are other ways. And I respect the ones that came. We all want to be amused. We all want to be entertained. In terms of soccer, it was a pretty awesome World Cup. But saying it was the best of all times is not seeing that out of the fields it was a World Cup of exclusion, a World Cup of the field. And meanwhile, I saw poor communities put together their pennies to squeeze in front of the TV and enjoy the only thing they had left, the pure joy of soccer, which FIFA insists is no longer a sport, is a product. And now, we try to find the ones to blame for our mistakes. An opportunist will say it was this party or that party. Well, I say it was all of us, it was people, it was corporations, it was all levels of government, federal, state and municipal. All the ones that were in line to build their arenas and to earn some money with this World Cup. The World Cup didn't break Brazil. My message was, and will always be, why do we need a World Cup to give us more jobs, more structure, when structuring the jobs must be given anyways, when our money for taxes should have been spent on getting us a better country, with or without a World Cup, with or without FIFA standards, and of course, without violating our basic rights. Legacy? And yes, there's money they came in, and the benefits are here, of course. But to me, the biggest legacy was the changing thought. It was the fact that our police brought to light the scandal of the tickets and the fact that we are questioning this model of business. The World Cup has ended, but we are just starting dealing with our issues. 
Mira said that with the seven one our dream is over. I say let's chase all the dreams. Hi, my name is Carla. I'm from Brazil and I'm here to tell you why I am not going to the World Cup. One of the reasons for making this video is that every time I tell someone that I'm from Brazil, someone in the group tells me that they're gonna go to the World Cup.